one, go. Hello everybody, this is Gerald Snivy and welcome to my new Let's Play as we do it live here on Twitch. And if you're watching this on YouTube later, then welcome to the archived version. Anywho, the playthrough we're doing today is Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. This game right here, I've mentioned this during like the end of my let's play of Kingdom Hearts Final Mix a couple of years back, but this game right here is my least favorite Kingdom Hearts game in the entire series. However, it's uh, definitely grown on me since I've played through the game in its entirety and finally beaten it not that long ago, more like several months ago, but even so. This has been a very long time coming, and despite uh, the flaws and uh, plot holes that this game in particular has, uh, still, still the worst in the series, in my opinion. And yeah, worse than Recoded, which, which uh, by many people's standards is like the worst in the Kingdom Hearts series. <laughs> The whole reason why this game right here is the least favorite, in my opinion, is because of its gameplay mechanics. The story is actually pretty solid, but still, <laughs> there are some uh, inconsistencies as I uh, accidentally let the demo play, which I did not mean to do. But anyhow, it's... Uh, Enough beating around the bush. Let's go ahead and get started with Rechain of Memories. Oh, there's one more thing I've forgotten to mention. Rechain of Memories is actually a remake of Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories that was originally released for the Game Boy Advance. However, it was later re-released as a full-fledged remake on the PlayStation 2. And in honest, my honest opinion, it should have been there in the first place, but that's just me. This version of the game was also later ported to Kingdom, the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD Remix Collection for the PlayStation 3. And it was also later brought into the PlayStation 4 version, which is Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix. And that is the version I'm going to be playing here today because of lower load times from 1, 2, the 60 frames per second, and 3. It just looks so damn gorgeous. <laughs> well, about as good as you can get for these uh, older titles anyway. And somehow I lost the only viewer I had, dang it. <laughs> okay, well, uh, anywho, I guess I'll go ahead and just continue. When we first start up a new game, we can only play a Sora, but since I've uh, beaten the, this game before, I have the option of choosing to either begin the game as Sora or Riku. In this playthrough, I will be playing bo as both characters. However, we're going to be starting things off with Sora's story first. And we have three different difficulties to select from. And this is true whether it's your first playthrough or your second playthrough or whatever. We only have three difficulties. Critical mode was not introduced until, I believe, Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. And we're not playing that game today, unfortunately. For this playthrough, we will be playing this game on proud mode. Because, well, I love a challenge. I love a fair challenge, to be exact. And this game does have its fair share of fair challenges. And we're going to play, of course, with Vibration on. Let's begin Kingdom Hearts Rechain the Memories right now.
So just like before, in the previous Kingdom Hearts game, meeting Kingdom Hearts 1, Simple and Clean is the main theme for this game, which is actually considered a spin-off. Well, it was considered a spin-off by many fans, but it actually turns out to be canon. So in other words, it's important and it's a it's a part of the main series for a reason. <laughs> and no matter how much we try to deny it. Anywho, this takes place shortly after the events of the first Kingdom Hearts game. And this intro does give you a nice glimpse of uh, what occurred during the first game. And that freaking yellow freak can burn in a freaking hellfire! And trust me, we're gonna get to it when the time comes. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, as I was trying to say, this intro does give you a very nice recap of uh, things that occurred in the first game. Although, it would be nice to have like an actual story perspective, but... And anyhow, this particular game is actually very important within the Kingdom Hearts storyline, because if you skip this game and jump straight into Kingdom Hearts 2, which was exactly what I did, <laughs> you're gonna be lost and confused like a, a headless chicken, and you're gonna be confused out of your freaking mind. Like, who are these people? What's going on here? What is this? What is that? Why is this a thing? What's going on here? <laughs> Pretty much every single question that every Kingdom Hearts fan has asked ever when playing through the entire series. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, I feel like I got something stuck in between my dang teeth. I think I got it out there. There we go, finally. <laughs> That was my breakfast. <laughs> a crumb from my breakfast. <laughs> but anywho. Hmm. After recapping the events of the first Kingdom Hearts game, we're now going to be pursuing Pluto. Which, uh, if you remember the end of the first Kingdom Hearts game, he has a letter from King Mickey, so we are pursuing him. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. The reason why? He may have a clue about King Mickey's whereabouts. So with that in mind, let's give chase and see where he leads us. Later that night, Along the road ahead lies something you need. However, in order to claim it, you must lose something that is dear to you. I wonder what he could mean by losing something dear to me in order to claim something of great importance. Strange castle, strange drawing, and this is a strange place. How the hell did we end up here? That is a really good question that's on my mind right now. <coughs> and with that, we are now officially beginning Kingdom Hearts Re-Chain of Memories.
Hey, you think it's okay to barge in? But we gotta do it if we're gonna find the king. The king? King Mickey's here? Something just told me he'd be here, okay? Well, Pluto also really? gave a good clue, too. Because now that you mention it, I was kind of thinking the same thing. Seriously? Me too. One look at this castle, and I just knew. Our very best friends. They're here. <laughs> yep. Guess great minds think alike. Wait, hey, hold on. It can't be just a coincidence. Oh, no, Kimmy. You don't mean that. Yep, I had it too. Mm hmm I had the exact same feeling. Gorge! Maybe it's contagious! You mean like chicken pox? Something screwy! We gotta go take a look! Alright. Where are you going? That way. To the door. <laughs> are you scared? Ah, oh, don't be ridiculous! Come on, let's go, Goofy! Hey, fellers, uh, shouldn't we shut the door behind us before we go? Sora! Oh my, who's this mysterious fellow? That's it. Who are you? <laughs> wow, way to be so hostile, Sora. Well, I was. Oh yeah, I'll try some magic. Sora! <laughs> Wow. Nothing's happening. What's going on here? Why is it not My question exactly. I should think it's obvious. The moment you set foot in this castle, you forgot every spell and every ability you ever knew. In this place, to find is to lose, and to lose is to find. That is the way in Castle Oblivion. Castle Oblivion? Ooh, so that's the name of the strange place. Here you will meet people that you have known in the past. And you will meet people you miss. I miss? Riku! You mean Riku's here? If what you want is to find him, Well, that was strange. And that's even stranger. Is he a hologram or something? What'd you do? I merely sampled your memories. And from them, I made this. A card? To reunite with those you hold dear. What's this? A card? It is a promise for the reunion you seek. Hold the card to open the door, and beyond it a new world. Yeah, new world my butthole. Proceed, Sora. To lose and claim anew. Or, to claim anew, only to lose. Oh. Come on, let's go. And with that, we got ourselves our first card, which is a picture of Traverse Town. And Traverse Town is our first world. So with that in mind, let's head up to the front door and begin our adventure entirely new. Dick. Can't speak English. Left stick or directional button, select a card. You can you currently only have one card. So with that, we have no other choice at this very moment in time. Let's head to Traverse Town. And off we go.
This can't be right. We're in Traverse Town. What the? What you see isn't real. This town is an illusion created by your memories, engraved in that card. Ingrained. My memories? Forget about that, Sora. We lost Donald and Goofy. Yeah, how the hell did we lose them? I mean, they stick out like sore thumbs for Pete's sake. Donald, Goofy! Guys, where are you? What did you do with them? They are at the mercy of the cards now. Master the cards and their strength will be yours again. Whatever could he mean? Guess we're finding out now. The laws of this castle requires that your friends be transformed into cards. Yet for some reason this rule does not apply to you. If you value your friends, you won't fail to pick them up. Anywho, basic controls work like this in a moment. Cards you pick up are, are added to the top of your stack. Use them and your friends will come to your aid. Okay, sounds good. The cards you use vanish but they will reappear to aid you time and again. Cards are the hearts of your friends. Everything in this castle is ruled by cards. Whenever an enemy or a door confronts you, cards are the only way to proceed. But you mustn't forget your own strength. Anywho, uh... Basic controls, use the left stick to move, jump with the circle button, and push square to roll. Roll like a mofo. First, think of yourself, move, then use the cards. Okay, sounds good. Let's go for it. You now know how to use your strength, but it would be of no use if you lose sight of your opponent. I wonder if you can catch me. All right. Good. Every move you make causes a card to disappear. If you use up all your cards, you will be unable to act. But there is a solution. Keep using cards until you run out and I will show you. All right, let's do that then. To use cards, just simply mash the X button. And if you want to lock onto an enemy, just simply push the R2 button. You have no more cards, and without them, no power. If you want that power back, you must focus. But bid the cards return to you, and they will. There are some exceptions to this rule, but I'll explain that when we get to it. The strength of your heart brought back the lost cards. You can recall sent cards at any time. You need only wish it. But each time you do, the cards will take longer to return. The cards are by no means unlimited. Use them wisely. Anticipate the flow of battle. And choose the most effective cards. You may use any card in your deck. And in order to cycle through your cards, just push either L1 or R1 to cycle through. The four card types you use in battle are grouped into two wider categories. The first category includes attack cards, magic cards, and item cards. The second category consists entirely of enemy cards. To use cards from a different category, push the touchpad. In older games, this would be the select button, but since the PlayStation 4 does not have a select button, the touchpad is used instead. Cards will empower you whether you are attacking or defending. But it is up to you to decide when to attack and when to defend. Do not forget that. And trust me, you do not want to forget that ever. Hey, 
Are you two all right? Where have you been? <laughs> you tell us. We When you opened the door, we saw a strange light. And the rest is just blank. Gee, that doesn't help. Try to remember what happened. I have to keep my journal up to date. Hey, Donald, where, where did I get the new clothes? <laughs> new clothes? More like your old clothes. Ah! Me too, Goofy. Somebody's been messing with our clothes. I'm pretty sure they were pulled from uh, source memories. Could it be the cards again? That is for you to ponder. Master the cards and make your way through the castle. But from here, you walk alone. Alone? We can't let Sora go alone. Yeah, Sora can't do anything without our help. Wow, gee, thanks a lot, Donald. You sure you'll be okay? Of course. You want me to go alone? Fine, I can take care of myself. <laughs> the hero speaks boldly. Go then. The rest of the castle the rest of Castle Oblivion awaits. Walk the avenues of Latin memory, or latent memory, and you shall meet someone dear to you. Whatever could he mean? I've got a bad feeling about this. Relax, Jiminy. I'm ready for any tricks he's got up his sleeve. How hard can it be to figure out these cards? You'd be surprised, Sora. You'd be surprised. All I have to do is use one in front of that, that door over there. There's more to it than just that. But for every time you enter a new world, you initiate a set of cutscenes, or you may initiate a battle straight away. It depends on the story progression and also uh, other circumstances. You can perform the following actions in the field. Use the left stick to move, right stick to look around, and push the right R3 button to reset the camera and face forward. Push the X button to swing the keyblade, circle the jump, square to execute a dodge roll. Hmm, what's this? Striking objects in the field with your keyblade yields various results. Try striking the barrel. Okay, sounds good. Oh! We got a blizzard card. Cool. Hmm, what's this? Marked objects can be lifted and thrown. Approach and press the triangle button to lift. Do you even lift, bro? Hey, is that a heartless? Touching a heartless on the field starts a battle. But you can strike the heartless first to gain the upper hand. In other words, stun them. You can do this in one of two ways. Either use the different objects on the field, or whack them with the Keyblade. And here we go. Time to begin our first real battle. Anywho, the whole reason uh, why this is my least favorite in the series is because of the card system. The card system works as so. Oops. Donald, please come to my aid. <laughs> Thanks a lot! Oh, gee. The cards work like so. As you uh, swing around and push the X button... Hmm, Tranquil Darkness. Uh, I'll get back to that in a moment. To open doors in the field, press triangle in front of the door. That sounds simple enough. Anywho, as I was trying to say how this works, it works something uh, like this. When you're in the middle of battling, the idea is to have a higher number card than your enemies as you fight them. If you have a card of equal or lesser value than the attack card of which the enemy uses, you cannot attack the enemy and the card is lost. And if you happen to use an attack card and an enemy uses a higher value card than you, then your attack is broken and you will be left vulnerable for about a second. And trust me, this second may not seem like much, but in the world of not only Call of Duty, but in Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories, that can mean the difference between life and death. 
So keep this in mind and do your best to try to uh, deal high value damage, nah, high value cards against every enemy you encounter. However, uh, there are some other caveats to this. And I'll get into those as we progress somewhere through Traverse Town. Before we continue, it's a good idea to go through the entire uh, map area which you start in, or any area that you open up here, and break everything and whack everything that you see. Because within many different objects you'll find green orbs which restore your health, and red orbs which are Moogle points. Moogle points, I'll get into those when uh, time comes, but collect as many of those as you can. One other thing, too, is that uh, even if you do manage to collect the uh, orbs, make sure they completely disappear before initiating a battle as often as you can, because if they go within you and they're not actually added to your total and you initiate a battle, those orbs are lost. And... Those aren't the only things you can find either. You can also find cards of different varieties such as magic cards, item cards, and attack cards. And since we only got uh, hmm, to proceed to the next room, you need a map card. This is another thing too. The cards are the rulers of the castle. <laughs> map cards are used to synchronize new unexplored rooms. First select a map card you want to use. Okay, and since we can only use this card at this point in time, let's go ahead and select it. And the number you see in the middle of the screen is the cri criterion for opening the door. The criterion display now means that the door will open with a value of 1 or greater. You need to pick a card that meets this criterion. Or criterion. Cards are marked with values from 0 to 9. Zero cards marked 0 are special cards that meet most criteria. The cards without a marked value is a key card. Key cards are only used at special doors. And since we can only use this card at this particular moment since this is the tutorial after all, let's go ahead and use it. Whirling crystal in front of Sora is called a save point. Stand near it and press triangle to open the save menu. And there's only one type of save point in this game and that is just type A. If you remember from Kingdom Hearts 1 there were two types, type A and type B. But they got rid of the type system altogether within the chain of memories, re-chain of memories, and other future Kingdom Hearts titles and start, instead started using uh, traditional regular save points like these and I think there's like a um, you know what I'm probably thinking of a different series altogether. Anywho now that we have the opportunity to save progress I'm gonna go ahead and do so and I'm gonna go, go ahead and choose file number five. You may be wondering why do I have three different save files here? Well I'll go ahead and tell you. The first save file here is for uh, my first playthrough as Sora, the second one is for my second playthrough as Riku, and the third playthrough I have here is for a trophy that I went for called Undefeated. And for the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 versions of this game, there is a tro this game offers trophies. And I've already obtained all trophies for not only this game, but also the first Kingdom Hearts. And, uh, also... I know I didn't get all the trophies in Birth by Sleep, but I do know I got all the trophies for another Kingdom Hearts game. Oh yeah, Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> Jeez. Why couldn't I remember that? I have no clue, but... Trophies in the game uh, are earned as you play through the game and complete certain actions. And uh, I'll show off what all the trophies are at the very end of uh, all play at the very end of uh, Riku's playthrough. Right now, we need to continue. We need to continue to make our way forward. 
I'll go ahead and continue the explanation of uh, different kinds of map cards. There are three primary types of map cards and one special category of map cards. The red map cards are standard map cards that feature enemies and obstacles and you can you can create whatever you see fit so long as you have the right map card and a good enough value for said map card. Green cards, they also feature enemies and obstacles but are more so designed to give Sora an advantage or whoever you're playing as an advantage such as uh, more item pickups, summoning friends at the start of battle, stuff of that nature. And finally, we have the final category, which are blue cards. Blue map cards are like the ones from the save room. Those kinds of cards do not feature any enemies whatsoever and are generally safe rooms. So you can just explore around and do whatever it is you have to do within that room and boom, you're done. And you can just simply move on and use up more map cards. You can carry up to a maximum of 99 map cards in total for all cards with the exception of the special cards. Special cards only work at special doors. There are four types of special key cards. There's the key of beginning, the key to truth, which is the final one, and uh, there's another one that's in the shape of Kingdom Hearts that's like a heart. We'll uh, see what that card is relatively soon. And finally, there's also the special key card known as the key to rewards. That card is incredibly rare and it has a very low drop rate, especially at this point in the game. And right now, I'm not going to worry about those special uh, key to reward cards and try to hunt them down. <laughs> uh, we'll worry about those later. And really, I think they have a higher drop rate after you complete the world. So, if I get them during the main part of this playthrough, great. If I don't, then oh well. We're not going to worry about it. Anywho, let's go ahead and use this card and open up the door. Another thing worth pointing out too, you can actually reassign the doors that you previously opened if you happen to have the right map cards and the right criteria. And you can do this for level grinding or if you want to say, if you just want to recycle certain safe rooms. There we go. So as I said, it's just you just have to do everything in your power to try to overpower the enemies with the attack cards that you have in your deck. And you also have to pray that they don't break your attack cards, but at this particular moment in the game, you don't have to worry about that whatsoever. Anywho, we got a new map card type, the Platinum Room. Oh boy! The Platinum Room. Ugh, oh, jeez. That is going to be something else. It's going to be an entirely different beast altogether. Okay. Since we gained enough experience orbs, we have three different options of leveling up. We have three different kinds of options between raising HP, CP, which are card points, or we can learn a new slate. As Sora levels up, Different slates will become available at different levels, so at this point we can learn Sliding Dash if we wanted to, or we can continue leveling up HP or CP. I'm going to go for Slate first. And how Slates work is if you work a certain combination of cards and it adds up to a certain numeric value, then you can execute that slate. Slates are very, very powerful abilities, but come at a high cost. And I'll explain, or more or less show you, what I mean when we get to that point. So despite us learning a new slate at this point in time, it's still a 
good idea to not worry about executing slates whatsoever. Slates are more so useful for boss fights, and not so much regular enemy encounters. Hmm, what do we have here? Meeting ground. The meeting ground card allows you to set up a room where friend cards show up more often and isn't at the start of battle. I think. Well, I do know they show up at the very start of battle, that much I know, but do they show up more often? I'd have to take another look at the description. <laughs> well, that didn't work out. Really? Stupid homing capabilities. Wow, my throat is starting to hurt. That's not good. Wow, another level up already! God damn! When it comes to leveling up in this game, what I tend to do is try to make... Uh, I try to do things in a more balanced fashion. And for here, I'm gonna go ahead and increase my... Uh, I'm gonna go for HP. I'm gonna go for HP first, and then next time I level up, I'll uh, increase my CP. There's uh, some other stuff that I want to go ahead and mess with. Yeah, give me that. Reverse. Also, uh, I think in the PS4 and PS3 versions, I could be wrong on this, but you have an option of changing your uh, controls from Type A to Type B. So this essentially flips certain actions, such as locking on with the R1 button as opposed to R2. And... You can uh, cycle through your deck with L2 and R2 instead of L1 and R1. I'm going to go ahead and switch to Type B because that's just my preferred playstyle and that's just what I'm most comfortable with. Besides, R1 is a familiar uh, control scheme for, well, me because I use the R1 button to lock onto enemies in Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 2 and I think even... Uh, uh, not Dream Drop Distance, that's different entirely. Um, oh yeah, Birth by Sleep. Anywho, within the pause menu we can view uh, stats of uh, Sora, and we can also view which friend cards are available to us within this world. In this case, it's just Donald and Goofy. However, when we reach other worlds, some other characters may join us on our party and can only be with us for that particular world. And once we leave, then that friend is gone. Until we return to that world again. Anywho, here we can view uh, the world map of uh, the layout of the entire uh, place. And it looks like we can uh, use our first key card here within this particular room. But what I like to do is explore as much of these worlds as much as possible before continuing on with the story so that way I can view everything that there is to view and level up if necessary if I'm immediately thrown into battle which is going to happen at some points and one other thing too Whenever you uh, enter a new world, the world map is purely random. I think the only exception here is Traverse Town. It's always the same, no matter what, for every playthrough. However, all other worlds are random. There is another exception to, the, to this rule. But, we're going to cross that path when we get to it. And trust me, it ain't going to be fun. It's just not. Okay, that's enough of that. Here we can also view the different map cards that we have in our possession. And uh, if you happen to have too many map cards on hand and you want to get rid of some that you just don't use, you can uh, simply select the card, select it, and you can uh, delete the map cards card that you have in your possession if you want to. But I think at this point it doesn't allow you to delete map cards. I think you have to have a certain amount with you at all times, otherwise you'll be stuck, quite literally. 
and world cards. Uh, this pretty much gives you a world map of uh, all the different worlds that you've explored up to this point. And status, this just views your status. And you can also view the different slates that you have available, such as Blizzara, Blizzaga, Cura, Curaga, Magic, and Goofy Tornado. You can view whatever combination of uh, cards that you have here from the status screen at any time. Also, uh, certain combinations, such as Goofy Smash and Wild Crush, these are exclusive to Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. These particular slates ha do not appear within the Game Boy Advance version of Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. One other thing, too, I haven't mentioned yet is that the leveling up system within, re within uh, Chain of Memories, the original, you can only... Uh, level up so far because the level cap is lower and you can't level up everything to its maximum for some reason. Thankfully this was fixed within Rechain of Memories and I'm glad that was the case. Anywho, let's go ahead and edit this deck if I can. You can uh, equip up to three different decks and assign a shortcut command. Let's see, for shortcuts I want to make this a shortcut. Whenever you uh, push the button to execute a shortcut, which I believe is the L1 button with Type B and L2 with Type A, uh, you go straight to that card and you can use it straight away if you wanted to. Use this for uh, emergency situations because cycling through your deck can take an eternity, especially if you have a lot of cards in it. And as I said, you have uh, three different kinds of decks to work with. I primarily like to rock two primary decks, and the third one for special situations. The first deck I call my normal deck, the second deck I call my combo breaker deck, and that's used for primarily for boss fights, and the third deck is made for special situations. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and add this new card in here, just like, uh, okay, there we go. And this Blizzard card, I'm going to go ahead and add here. As you're going through your deck and assembling it, keep an eye on your max CP and the value of the card. Because if you happen to uh, exceed your max CP, you cannot use that particular deck at all. Why? Because... Uh, the rules of the castle are broken. I guess. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, but uh, the higher value the card is, the more CP it will be assigned. For example, since this uh, Kingdom Key Keyblade has a high value of 8, which is the second, to hi second highest uh, value card you can get next to number 9, uh, its CP is 17. However, Another card that's even higher than even number 9 is Zero, because Zero cards are very special. Zero cards need to be used in a strategic pa strategic fashion, because Zero cards can break any card. However, if you use it too soon, then any other card can break it. So, for example, if you happen to notice some a boss execute a combo and use a slate of their own, Use a zero card, and you can break their combo instantly. However, if you happen to use the zero card too soon, then you're going to be in trouble. I would say it's a good idea to have uh, at least a couple of zero cards on hand. However, for my playstyle and my preferred way to play, I prefer to stick with uh, high-value cards such as sevens, eights, and nines. And I try to use as many of those as I can, as opposed to other numeric values. Sure, nu other numeric values are cheaper, but the problem with it is... Well, they can easily be broken. Oh, nice! That was freaking sweet. Also, what I executed was a slate. To execute a slate, just simply push the triangle button to start, uh... 
assembling the cards you want to use for your slate. And after you push the triangle button the fourth time, kind of like this, the card slate will be used. And whatever card values you used will be uh, the highest numeric, will uh, typically be a high numeric value above nine. And the maximum value you can get within that particular uh, situation with any slate in the game is 27 or triple zero. That's the lowest. Oh yeah! When it comes to slates, as I mentioned earlier, there is a high cost to using them. The first card that you use within a slate, that card cannot be used for the remainder of the fight. That's why whenever I use slates uh, outside of boss fights, uh, I try to stick with friend cards because friend cards infinitely respawn. Your regular cards, however, do not. However, there is a way to fix that particular issue, but that doesn't uh, come into play until later on in the game, when we have better cards and certain item cards within our possessions. Within our possession. Oh. Hello, Works in Shawario. I started uh, streaming around 12.30. I know it's a little later than uh, I should have uh, started, but... Uh, I had to take my, I had to take the truck to the car wash because it needed it, and I was also getting things together. I was trying to change around the HDMI connector from uh, the Nintendo Wii to the PlayStation 4. I also had to disable HDCP so I could even uh, capture gameplay from here, and. I also had to change games from the PlayStation 4 as well because in here I had Call of Duty World War 2 and so I had to get out Kingdom Hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix and I also had to set up my new green screen which is the Elgato green screen and man I am loving this I'm loving this green screen anywho let's go ahead and open up this special door doors and bot Embolized with the crown are special doors. You need special cards called key cards to open these doors. But just having the car key card isn't enough to open the door. You need two, the key card and one or more additional cards meeting certain criteria. Pick map cards that meet the criteria and you can open the door. And we're going to do just that. As for which one I'm going to use... Hmm... I think I'm going to go ahead and use this. And I know, uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm playing on PlayStation 4. This is the PlayStation 4 version of Kingdom Hearts uh, 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix. Alright, let's see what we got here. Hmm, fighting alone isn't as easy as I thought. Hey guys! Ah! Don't pop out of nowhere like that! Hey, it's not our fault. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, yeah? Pluto, what the hell are you doing here? Things keep getting stranger. What's Pluto doing here? My question exactly. <laughs> There's nothing strange about that. We came to Traverse Town with Pluto, didn't we? Did we? Well, technically yes, you did. No, wait! According to my journal, this was before you met Sora and that you came to town with Pluto. What? He's right! We were chasing after Pluto, and that's how we ended up in Castle Oblivion. But aren't we in Traverse Town? Well, it's not really Traverse Town. I think the card created this Traverse Town inside Castle Oblivion, which came from our memories. 
Ah, who cares about all that? It's too confusing. <laughs> Says every Kingdom Hearts fan to the entire freaking story direction ever. <laughs> hmm. I don't know where we are, but let's just keep moving forward to feeding Heartless. We'll get somewhere. You better be careful or it's heart the Heartless that are going to defeat you. Hey, Squall! How's it going, buddy? Long time no see. Leon, it's you! What are you doing in Castle Oblivion? Castle Oblivion? What are you talking about? This is Traverse Town. And how do you know my name? Who are you? Wow. Seriously? I never met the likes of you before. Quit playing, Leon. We all fought the Heartless together. You know that. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know your names. You don't? Sorry. I can't believe it. How could you have forgotten about us? Good question. I feel for you, but you've got the wrong guy. Happens all the time. <laughs> really? Don't take it so personally, Sora. Huh. You do remember my name, asshole! <laughs> exactly what I just said. Now, 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 hold on. Why do I know your name? Hmm, you think Leon's just kidding around? If he is, it's not funny. Sora's really upset. I don't blame him either. Who's kidding around, Goofy? You and Donald are the ones who... Hey! I don't get it. Something's wrong with my memory. What's happening here? Something incredibly complicated and takes way too long to explain. I don't know, Leon. Maybe Aerith was onto something after all. She said she sensed some uncanny kind of power and asked us to look into it. Well, this is as uncanny as it gets. Maybe you should take Sora to see Aerith. Yuffie, you know my name! Yep, looks like you know mine too. You know him? Nope, total stranger, but I definitely know his name. Strange, yes, but convenient. We, we can skip the introductions. How is it that you can accept the situation so easily? I don't get you. Well, I'm gonna run ahead and fill Aerith in. Leon, you give them the grand tour. Which, in actuality, he doesn't do. See you later! I guess it's no use pondering over it. Come on, follow me. But there are Heartless wandering around town. I better teach you how to protect yourself in battle. Okay. Let's see what you got. See the number printed on your cards? They range from 0 to 9. Higher numbers mean stronger cards. If you and your enemy play a card at the same time, the higher card wins. I've went ahead and explained this before. Go on and try it out. This is what the game was talking about when it came to higher value cards. There we go. See how it works? Playing a card higher than your opponents and breaking through their defenses is called a card break. Playing a lower card results in your attack being deflected and leaving you vulnerable. Even powerful cards can be deflected if the enemy's card is higher, or if they use a slate that's greater than the value of your play card. Your playing card. Whoever is on the losing side of a break is left wide open to attacks. Don't let that person be you. And I just explained that not that long ago. Cards with a zero as their value are special. No matter what card the enemy plays, you can break it with a zero card. 
but if you play the zero card too soon, the enemy can break it with any card they play. Again, another thing I just explained. In other words, it's the most powerful card if it comes last, and useless if it comes first. Try to make the most of it. Card values also affect the cost of assembling a deck. Keep that in mind. Now it's time to teach you how to stock cards. You don't have to use battle cards one at a time. You could also assemble three cards and use them all at once. This is called stocking cards. Stocking cards and using them in threes is much stronger than using cards individually. Go on, give it a try. Stock any three cards in your deck. Sounds good. Let's go for it. The sum of your three stocked cards become the value you play. The value is usually high and hard to break, and the combo attack deals lots of damage. Don't hold back. Show me what you can do. Combo attacks aren't the only benefit of stocking cards. Choose your cards carefully and you can unleash special abilities called Slates. Slates come in all varieties and each has its own unique card combination. You should try it out, out once you've collected more cards and learned a slate or two. But keep one thing in mind. Every time you use stocked cards, you lose the first card you picked. You can't reload it. The lost card won't return until the end of the battle. Relying only on slates will cause your cards to run out. That means trouble. Think, think you got the hang of it, Sora? Yeah, more or less. I'll pick up the la rest when I fight some real battles. Here, I found this lying around. You take it. Remember what I told you, and make good use of it. Sure, sounds good to me. Anywho, we got a new uh, card. Simba, and the Key of Guidance. This was the other key card I was talking about earlier. Anywho, this new card we have is a summoning card. Depending on the character you select, and the... Uh, Blech. Depending on which character you choose to put into your deck, that particular character has his, his or her own abilities. And summoning cards can unleash powerful attacks and also get you out of sticky situations. However, they typically are very high costing. And especially if you're going for higher value cards, yeah, these can... Uh, jump your CP count to maximum almost any day of the freaking week. Keep this in mind. Keep this in mind while you're assembling your deck and try not to exceed your max amount. <laughs> That's a good question. How are they in this game? Well, technically speaking, when Sora entered through the door to start his adventure in Traverse Town, from Castle Oblivion, they were turned into cards, and so whenever a battle occurs, we collect them and we can harness their strength and they can help us out in many ways. Or they can hinder us, depends on uh, their actions. Okay, let's see what we can do here. We need a value of three or higher, and it seems we only have one card that will do the job. We also have this one too, but not gonna worry about that now. Let's go with Feeble Darkness. I figured this would be a good idea and good card to use. In this room, Heartless are gonna be using weaker attack cards or weaker value attack cards, so if they were previously using something like four or three for their uh, attack values or even twos, they're lower to like ones, twos, and threes. One other thing I haven't mentioned yet is that the other kind of uh, card that you have in your deck that you can unleash is known as an item card. 
item cards are one-time use and work like this. Depending on the item's description and what it does, you can uh, use that particular item card to help you recover, or, for example, this uh, potion card allows me to instantly reload my deck with no troubles whatsoever. However, if it does not recover any cards used in slates or other other card types. <laughs> yeah. They only recover uh, certain cards. But for the most part, they do reload your deck instantaneously. And unlike, uh, yeah, this is a card game. <laughs> it's a children's card game, folks. And this is why this game's my least favorite in the series, because of the whole freaking card system. Just not a fan. Uh, what was I saying before? Dang it, I forgot. Oh, another thing too. Potions only recover attack cards. They do not instantly reload magic cards. If you want to instantly reload magic cards, you need, uh... Another kind. You need another item card altogether, which are ethers. And if you want to restore both, you need something like an elixir or a mega elixir. But those kinds of cards do not come into play until much, much later. Trust me. Trust me when I say this too. Here we go. There is one other thing I haven't mentioned yet, is that uh, we recently have a new follower, and it's uh, Wolf White. Anywho, uh, I'm sorry I didn't mention that at the beginning of the stream, but welcome to the Twitch channel. Hope you enjoy your stay. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't mention your name earlier. I was just doing introductions and explaining the game's mechanics and how everything works. And also why this game is my least favorite in the entire series, even more so than Recoded. And that is a lot of people's least favorite Kingdom Hearts game. Oops, did not mean to use that. Oh well. Another thing too, item cards are one-time use, and they can only be used like once per battle. Ew. Material... Marty... Material walking? I don't know. Anywho... It's a new uh, map card type. And I'll explain what that does when we get a chance to open up another door. Go. Another thing worth pointing out, too, is that... Uh, if you happen to take damage within uh, within battles and stuff, you don't recover all your HP when the battle ends. It's not like Final Fantasy XIII in that regard. Instead, your health remains the same. So, in, ugh, excuse me. In order to recover your health, you have to use a cure during battle or find HP orbs in the field. And this can be easier said than done. And you can easily get yourself killed if you are completely and utterly reckless. Yeah. Looks like we got another special door. Oh my god, gimme. Yeah. Excellent. Another thing too, if you happen to grab a card, make sure it says that it has appeared in your deck. M meaning it says Kingdom Key or whatever I whatever the name of the card is. If it goes within you and you start a battle before it says what kind of card it is, you lose that card. You lose the new card that you just gained. Why is this? Eh, I don't know. It's really dumb and it also creates a lot of stress. <laughs> a lot of unneeded stress too at that. Okay, let's go ahead and raise HP. Because we raised our CP last time, I think. I already lost track, dang it. Well, anywho, it's always a good idea to have more HP. 
Okay, within uh, this key card room, we need a value of three or higher and also the key of guidance. Whatever criteria number cards appear first is what you need to use prior to using the key card. You have to use these in order. Okay, what do we have? Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this and this. All right, let's see what we got now after this drink. <sighs> Aerith, have you forgotten me too? I don't know whether to say nice to meet you or good to see you again. I don't think I know you, but I still feel like you belong here. Yeah, exactly. Like we've never met, but still doesn't feel... But it still doesn't feel weird knowing your name. But I'm telling you, we have met. We took on the Heartless together. We were a team. It feels like you're right, but I can't remember. Then I guess you won't remember what you told me. In Hollow Bastion, when I sealed the keyhole, we may, we may never meet again. But we'll never forget each other. See? You do remember! He's right, Leon. I remember you saying that too. I guess I can't write it off as a coincidence then. I don't have any memory of that, but somehow I still remember. I think your heart is doing the remembering for us. Hmm. My heart? My question, my reaction exactly. We don't know you, Sora, but your heart is full of memories of us together. Those memories must resonate with in our hearts too. Maybe they tell us the thing, things we couldn't otherwise know. So you're saying that Sora's memories are affecting ours? His memories do seem to have a certain power. Oh, believe me, you have no idea. <laughs> Maybe it's like that guy said then. This town is just an illusion. Something my memories created. And there's someone special to you in this town. How did you... Ah, I get it. My memories are resonating with yours. Telling you what happened. Yeah, a friend of mine is somewhere in this town. I mean, Castle Oblivion. Castle Oblivion? What's that? There aren't any castles in here. That's not quite what I mean. You're still not sure what's going on yourself, right? Right. We just got here, after all. I want to take a better look around. Then go have a walk around town. There are heartless, but that's no problem for you. So you know I can fight. I can't say I know, but I feel like believing you. Let's leave it at that. Okay, sounds good to me. <laughs> Let's move on then. And with that, we got the final key card to progress the story within Traverse Town, the Key of Truth. The Key of Truth usually hides a boss within that particular door, so keep this in mind. Before opening the door, make sure you create a save room shortly before that particular room. Okay, what should we use here? We do have this card, which is the black room. This is a very special room where only black fungi appear, but we can't use it for this particular door due to the criteria being higher than the card we have. And I'll get more into that later when it is necessary. Anywho, let's see what we can use. We can use uh, Material Waking, Meeting Ground, Stagnant Space, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and uh, Platinum Room too. I could use that too, but I'll save that for another time. In the Material Waking r Room, this is a special room where your cards are stronger. So in other words, 
it raises all their numeric values. So eights become nines, seven becomes eight, and so on and so forth. However, this also affects zero cards. So zero cards now become ones and twos. So keep this in mind as you're exploring. And try your best to... Uh... Shoot, what was I trying to say? I don't remember. Either way, just keep in mind your the deck you're using and how many zero cards you have within the deck before making this particular room and using it. And for this one, I think I'm gonna go with the... Uh, I'm gonna go with the Material Waking. The reason is because I feel like showing off a new room type. Alright, let's see what we got in here. Each and every single room is essentially built the same. They're all square rooms. Each have their own fair share of obstacles, ladders, bouncy things, and stuff to whack. It's like this in every single room, so figure I throw that out there. Another thing, too, worth pointing out is that the Material Waking Room, it only affects your regular attack cards. And it can also affect slates, too. So, I figured I'd throw this out there as well. Anywho. One other thing worth pointing out, too, is that depending on uh, which card you use, you can determine the amount of Heartless that appear in the room, and what kinds, and also can determine the room size, too. For example, this Material Waking Room is a medium-sized room, and I believe uh, just the regular number of Heartless, so each room size and number of Heartless is scaled between 1 and 3 stars. Oops. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, excuse me. I felt that one coming. Alright, let's go, Goofy. Boom, baby. <laughs> Man, I love that. Seriously love doing slates using my friend cards, because friend cards are definitely your friends, <laughs> if it wasn't obvious. There we go. He's done. Another meeting ground card. As you're going through each and every single one of these rooms, you're going to be fighting a lot of Heartless and getting a lot of map cards. So, if you're low on map cards, just try to create a room with Heartless and get some more. Whatever you feel is necessary. Just remember, you can only hold up to a maximum of 99 of any card. You can only hold up to a maximum of 99 map cards in total. There we go. Another meeting ground card. <laughs> I think you get a lot of those kinds of cards, depending on uh, what world you're in. Different cards yield different results. Another thing worth pointing out, too, in this game, there's no random encounters, as you've probably seen at, as of this point. Each encounter can be initiated at will. At will, or it could be against your will. It depends if the enemy hits you with their attack, or if they just run into you, or if you run into them, or if you whack them with the Keyblade. Either way, no random battles, but that still doesn't mean that you should let down your guard depending on what enemy appears on the field, because, for example, these uh, fire enemies, you may be thinking that will be the only enemy on the field. No, not even close. It has friends, and typically those friends are pretty powerful. It depends on where you are in the game. 
and what enemies are running around and about. So if you're looking to heal yourself, try to avoid enemy encounters and try to just whack around the environment and see if you can get some HP orbs. Another way to restore your HP too, I haven't mentioned this either, is to go to a save point. Go to any save point that you created or leave the world altogether and go back and save progress. That easy. Come on, Goofy. Anywho, uh, I haven't really explained uh, certain slates and how they work. When it comes to the Goofy Tornado, depending on its level, it increases its duration, like how long Goofy sticks around. But how the Goofy Tornado works is that Goofy just spins around you, providing you a uh, means of not only protection, but also to whack whatever enemies he spends within his path. Oh god, card. There we go. <sighs> Too bad we only got number two, which is really, really bad, <laughs> in my personal opinion. But lower value cards do allow you additional cards within your deck, and they have a lower cost. The only thing is, if you happen to run into enemies that use high-value attacks, then <laughs> what good is that card if you can't even use it? That's my mindset, anyway. And there we go. Alright, let's see what's next. I think here's the room I need to go to next. Yeah, Key of Truth. As you notice, there's actually a, an additional uh, criteria that uh, is introduced within this particular room. However, before I even... Uh, oh, right. I don't have any uh, save point cards, so <laughs> I have to run all the way back to the freaking save point room. That is lame. But as I said before, thankfully these rooms are not too big and they're all built in the square fashion. So it's not that hard to get back to, uh, to get back to any uh, save points that you've made prior or to get back to the world entrance. So long as you cleared everyone else out, <laughs> that is. If you didn't do that well then you're gonna be in trouble because then you'll have to play the dodge game and dodging enemies while you're low on the HP is not fun because it's actually pretty dang difficult to escape from battle and yeah like I said you are pretty much forced into fights if you happen to run into enemies or if you happen to initiate a uh, stagger and there is a way to escape. However, I'm not really going to go into that at this particular moment in time because right now we have this door. And this door, it, its criteria is that we need to use a green card. And it could be any green card. And as long as it doesn't have a numeric value, we can use any card we have within our possession so long as it's that particular color. So let's use that, and boom. Let's dive in, see what we can do. Hey, Sid, how you doing? Well, what do you know? It's Sora. Wait, what am I saying? I don't know you. But you do look like a Sora. What's with the spiky hair and baggy pants? <laughs> Ask at many, many different protagonists of many different games who typically have spiky hair. It's okay, Sid. That's my name. So, you've heard of me, eh? Well, I can't say as I'm surprised. Anyway, maybe you can help me out. 
A friend of mine's supposed to be somewhere in this castle or er, town. Got any ideas? Your friend, huh? L lately, all this town scene is heartless. Can't even take two steps without getting attacked. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? In fact, this plaza's the worst. Word is, a jumbo-sized heartless shows up when that bell rings. If you value your hide, you'll get out of here while the getting is good. Gorsh, maybe we should have maybe we should leave. Don't you want to see the heartless? No, we don't! <laughs> Well, shit. <laughs> the bell! Be careful, Sora. And here it comes. The Jumbo Heartless is the Armored Knight. <laughs> and he's in his original PlayStation 2 color scheme. And not the one from Final Mix. Strange, right? So yeah, the Heartless are now in their original colors. And those extra colors were only exclusive to Final Mix. One particular strategy I like to use in boss fights works like this. Ooh, this is a special card. What this does, depending on the situation and the boss fight in hand, Collect those cards, and you can turn the tide of battle to your advantage. Keep this in mind as you're, uh... Keep this in mind as you're fighting the enemy. Come on, Goofy, let's go! Boom, baby! Man, I love doing that. As I was trying to say, one strategy I like to use is to make sure this is... At least down to, you know, the reload command. Make sure it's down to one at the very least during boss fights. So that way, if I need to reload my cards, I can do so instantly. Boom. Just like that. Or at the very least, decrease my downtime as much as possible. Just be sure not to reload your deck too early. Otherwise, you're going to be a sitting duck. That'll work. It's the maximum value, so why not? Let's go again! Some slates actually have reaction commands. Be sure to push the triangle button at the right time and try not to spam too much. If you do, well then, you're gonna be in trouble. Oh man, that was lame. Another thing I haven't mentioned yet is that you can... Uh, any cards you have stored within your slate, you can uh, go ahead and cancel them at any time by pushing uh, a certain button. Which one was it? I think it was L1. I might have said that's like... Uh, gives you access to your shortcuts. But... Anywho, boss is defeated. Whenever we defeat a boss, the world is pretty much complete. There are maybe some exceptions here and there later on down the line. But whenever you do defeat a boss, you get that particular boss's enemy card. And that was the guard armor. And enemy cards are very, very special cards and can help you greatly, but usually have a very high cost. So your friend wasn't here? No, I don't think I'll find him in this town. But he's somewhere in this castle, I just know it. Castle? Like this whole town's inside some humongous castle? <laughs> oh, that's rich. 
He's probably right, Sid. We might, we may not understand what's going on, but Sora does. He can see that reality is bigger than just this world. I wish I was that sure. You'll be okay, Sora. No matter what shape reality takes, you can handle it. I may not remember you, but I know you in my heart. Leon. Take care, Sora. I'm a little lost, but best of luck anyway. Thanks, guys. See you later. And so we shall make our leave. Or not? Hey, Earth. What's up? I don't have all the answers, but I had to tell you something. Your memories created this town, right? That's what that's what the guy who gave me the card said. If that's true, then this town is just a figment of your mind, and so are we. But you can't be a figment. You're standing right here. The town is here too. But I'm not really me. I don't remember remember the things I should, and I sense things I shouldn't. Sora, beware your memories. In the journey to come, you'll be faced with more illusions. Sometimes the shadows of your memory will deceive you, try to lead you astray. So, uh, what exactly does that mean? I'm sorry, I'm just another illusion. The truth is out of my reach. Don't say stuff like that! It's depressing! Stay strong, Sora. Don't let the illusions distract you from what's truly important. Okay. Thora! Are you ready to go? Yeah, be right there. Well, I better get going. Where the hell? Aerith! Aerith! What about Aerith? Where'd she go? I was just talking to her. Aerith left with Leon and the others, remember? Huh? You worried us, just standing there by yourself? Is that what she meant? Could be. It could very well be. So with that, the world is now complete. And whenever you finish a world, you are brought to the Conqueror's Respite. I think that's how it's said. And within the Conqueror's Respite, you can uh, change this room's... Uh, layout if you so desire, but it's highly recommended that you don't. And usually, every single one of these are yeah. built the same. They're a square room, and they have a huge ladder. There's another door here, too, and I'll go ahead and explain what that does. Usually, whenever you find another special door like this one down here I think or no it's just a, another door okay that door just leads to uh, here that's what I'm thinking oops well it's another room we can create and we can uh, we can explore it if we so desire but we can't really do much in that room anyway because we don't have a certain card in our possession at this moment. So, exploring any further at this point in time is kind of pointless. Anywho, at least we got another uh, cure card. Sure, its value was only three, which kind of stinks, but alas, this can't be helped. The heart of the cards is purely random. Anywho, let's see what this does. 
slightly extends attack range of attack cards and the limit is 30 attacks and uh -huh. 30 is the required CP and that's pretty dang high for a, an attack card let's see can I do anything with you oh wow I can do it excellent and I think I'm going to throw this six in here, too, just because I need some other uh, higher value cards. I would prefer seven over six, but hey, that's just me. Another thing we're pointing out, too, is that the enemy cards, in order to access them in battle, you have to push the touchpad during battle and then select that card. And then that particular card's effect will uh, initiate. And you can only have one effect going at a time. So if you happen to switch effects, they do not stack on top of each other. You have to go through or It's best to utilize that first combination's uh, effects first, then start initiating another. But as I said, enemy cards take up a lot of CP typically but they can be very useful and very powerful you again what the hell are you doing here well Sora did you enjoy meeting your memories yeah it was good to see everyone but what do you really want from me what do you have to give Hello. Hello to you too. What do you want? No hog in the hero. Then perhaps you'd like to test him. Perhaps I would. My show now, Keyblade Master. Who am I? Oh, my name's Axel. Got it memorized? Uh, sure. Good. You're a quick learner. So, Sora, now that we're getting to know each other better... <laughs> don't you go off and die on me now. <laughs> sure, Axel. Whatever you say. Anywho, Axel! It's time to fight him now. Axel is one of many people who we are going to be fighting within Castle Oblivion. And he is going to be a boss who is someone who can not only stun lock you theoretically, but can also use slates. And now I'm using them in pure freaking panic. <laughs> and that was not good. Whenever you come across bosses, it's wise to... Prepare a high combination of cards and prepare a slate. Oh dear. Alright, I'm just gonna just do this. It's always a good idea to be well prepared when it comes to boss fights. However, many, many bosses can throw you off guard. Like Axel, for example. Sure, it seems like a... Uh... Come on, let's go! Oh, can't believe we managed to catch him in transition. When it comes to these boss fights, your friend cards are definitely your best allies. If they're available, Use them, spam them, and use slates like a freaking madman. Trust me. There we go. Whew, that was close. <laughs> this encounter can be a pretty difficult encounter, too. Axel is no pushover, that is for sure. 
And for defeating him, we don't get his card, but we do get something else. A new spell card called Fire. <laughs> Fire! Dang it, I hit my green screen. Another one? What's it do? Hmm, kind of looks like the card you use. When you made Driver's Town. Then I guess we're gonna need it to keep going. That's right. <laughs> How are you still alive? Did you really think after that introduction I would give up oh so easily? You were testing us. And you passed. Congratulations, Sora. You're ready now. Ready to take on Castle Oblivion. You will need to follow your memories. Trust what you remember and seek. But you forget. Then you will find someone very special. You mean King Mickey and Riku? <laughs> you will just have to give some more thought to who it is that's most important to you. What the hell do you mean by that? Our most precious memories lie so deep within our hearts that they're out of reach. But I'm sure that you can find yours, Sora. Why me? You have lost sight of the light within the darkness, and it seems that you've forgotten that you forgot. The light within... darkness? Are you talking about the time... Would you like me to give you a hint? Sora, do you need it? I'm gonna figure it out for myself. If you're in my way, don't worry, Sora. We'll protect you. Thanks, Donald. Good answer. Just what I'd expect from the Keyblade Master. Uh, dude, Sora's not a Keyblade Master. But be forewarned. When your sleeping memories awaken, you may no longer be who you are now. What the hell are you talking about? Seriously, what is he talking about? And with that, we got a bunch of world cards. These world cards will allow you to create new worlds and progress through the story. Uh, Alright, let's see what Donald and Goofy have to say before we head up. Gorsh, you think that... Blah, blah, you think there are more got... Blah, damn it, I can't read today. Gorsh, you think there are more like Axel and that other guy? You'd be surprised, Giffy. You'd be surprised. If we meet Axel again, you can leave him to me. <laughs> Trust me, I will. Moving to another floor erases all the rooms you've created. If you return to this floor later, you'll need to make new rooms using new map cards. That's fine. That's totally fine. Let's move on. Hmm. What's wrong, Jiminy? Well, you see, what Axel said back there worries me. What could he have meant by, you may no longer be who you are? I may no longer be me. How can I be anyone else? <laughs> of course. Still, you can't be too careful. Yep. Feels like just about anything could happen here in Castle Obliv-y- Obliv-y- obliv Castle Oblivion! Oh, yeah! Now I remember. We'll be okay. Whatever it is they're cooking up, we'll be able to handle it together. Of course we will. Like that creepy castle we explored together. The one with all those weird contraptions. When was that? You're talking about Hollow Bastion, right? I can't remember. What was it, Todd? Gorge. Oh, it was, uh, Holla... Holly? Holler? Hollow Bastion. Sorry, I can't remember. 
Oh dear. Stop goofing around. Goofy, sure you didn't make it up? Oh, I don't think so. Hmm. That doesn't seem right. For some strange reason, Goofy can't remember uh, Hollow Bastion at all. Anywho, we have a new object. The swirling spear in front of Sora is called a warp point. You can freely move to and from floors that you've already completed. Stand near it and press triangle to open the world map menu. And with it, we can use this to travel back to the first floor or any previous floor that we previously completed up to this point. And this will more or less be useful for level grinding and also trying to acquire new cards and uh, stuff of that nature. And since we're only an hour and 43 minutes into the stream, I'm going to continue and do another world. Hollow... Horror... Halo... Hmm... That's funny. Why can't I remember? Because Castle Oblivion. To find is to lose, and to lose is to find. We'll be here all week if we wait for Goofy to remember. <laughs> uh, funny enough, you're not wrong. Alright, let's see what we got for cards. We have Agrima, Olympus Coliseum, Wonderland, Monstro, and Halloween Town. As of the second floor, depending on the... Uh, at this point now, we can tackle any of the worlds that we have within our possession in any order we see fit. And each world, I believe, is set by ideal difficulty? Then again, I could be completely wrong on that. And, uh... I think I'm probably gonna try to do this a little out of order. Because... Next on Sora's journey, he explored Wonderland, or at least, uh, that's uh, his ideal, can, you know, ideal path. Then he went to, uh, Deep Jungle, which, oddly enough, is not in this game because copyright reasons, I guess. And there's some other stuff going on, too, behind the scenes, where Deep Jungle just simply could not reappear in any future Kingdom Hearts game. Okay, um, I think we're gonna go to Olympus Coliseum. Let's do this. Let's go to Olympus Coliseum. And the reason is because I like fun in games, especially in the period of which this uh, entire movie takes place. By movie, I mean this is the world of Hercules. Look, an announcement! Hmm... It's for some sort of contest. They're calling it the Olympus Coliseum Survival Cup. Contenders have to run an obstacle course, battling each other along the way. And listen to this! The great hero Hercules will also compete for the cup! It says here he's never been beaten. Sounds like fun. Why don't we enter too? I thought you'd say that. I thought you'd say that. Whether there's a contest, contest you're raring to join up. <laughs> you're going to compete even if we don't, right? Uh huh. Guess we better tag along then. Hold it, everyone. There's more. Only contenders who finish the preliminary course may enter the main competition. Seems perfectly fair. It says the preliminary course is just ahead. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go!
and we're not the only ones who are interested in this competition. Hercules is a noble and true strength and gap gallantry, the perfect hero. Oh, he's perfect, all right. Perfectly irritating, infuriating, black. Just think about that little sunspot makes me boil. Oh, I'd like to drag him into the underworld. Which is why you hired me. Hey, Cloud. Good to see you again. That's right. You're my man. Cloud, is it? Your job is to beat Hercules in the games. And once you've got him cornered, finish the job. Do that for me and you'll you restore my lost memories as we agreed. You have my word. Hmm. So apparently people are having memory issues like amnesia or some other things are going on. That's the theme of this game. It's all centered around memories. Anywho, welcome to Olympus Coliseum. Within this place, we'll find new heartless types. One of them is right here, the Big Bodies. Here's a little fun fact for you. Big Bodies in the, ori in the, the original Chain of Memories were actually very difficult to take down. And the reason is because the game plays on like a 2.5D plane. And because of the nature of uh, that particular playing scheme, big bodies, you couldn't really get around them very easily. Not, not like the PS2 version where they're not so nimble, but they're still pretty nimble nonetheless. And here we got a new uh, map card, Almighty Darkness, and we can learn a new slate. Let's go for it. And with that, we got Stun Impact. Stun Impact, you use three of the same kinds of attack cards with a total value of 20 to 23. And that is how it works. Let's see what's behind pillar number one. <laughs> Nothing. All right, let's see what's next. Hey, we got a couple of monkeys. It looks like the yellow... Ugh. Strangely enough, some of the monkeys actually swapped color schemes within Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. <laughs> Why is that? Eh, don't ask me. I don't have much of a clue. But anyway... The blue monkeys just uh, attack you with a wild Fury Fang combo that could deal quite a large amount of damage if you're not too careful. And the uh, yellow ones, they can uh, shoot slingshots at you, and not slingshot, they shoot little pellets at you. And if they do that, then you'll uh, drop, uh, you'll drop uh, Moogle Point orbs. And if you're not fast enough, you can end up losing them. Keep this in mind while you're progressing through this entire world and fighting those monkeys. Another kingdom key. Too bad it's only a value of four. <laughs> My mindset is, if it's a high value card, then it's awesome. If it's not a high value card, then it kind of stinks. Just saying. However, lower value cards do have their use, but for my playstyle, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Anywho, if you want to escape a battle at any time, all you have to do is just run to either end of the battle arena and just hold, just uh, run against that position for a set amount of time, and you'll be able to escape. Like this. However, there is a trophy that you can get in this game, and that requires you to never escape from battle. And by that, it means do not run away, ever. 
if you happen to run, then that trophy is completely locked out for the remainder of the playthrough. And you'll have to start the entire game all over again if you want another shot at that trophy. Alright, Donald. Can you finish him? Thanks, buddy. Here's Beth. Around. Nothing's ever gonna keep you down. Anywho, we got a new map card. The Roulette Room. The Roulette Map Room. How that works is that at the end of each and every battle, uh, unless you have all that, unless you have 99 map cards in your possession, if you happen to uh, win the fight, you will get a random map card. Well, random I mean you uh, just simply get a new map card that you can choose from a roulette re wheel. Hmm, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this in now. So that way we don't have to worry about fulfilling the criteria of this later. So let's go ahead and put you here and just call it a day. As for you, we need a green card. We got plenty of these, so there you go. And boom. Like I said, these layouts are completely random each and every time with the exception of Traverse Town. That one's always the same for every playthrough. Huh? Where did you come from? Don't tell me you guys finished the polims. We sure did, and now we want to go for the cup. Well, you came to the right place. Not that you stand a chance against Herc. <laughs> Why not? Two words. You ain't heroes. <laughs> That's three words. You're wrong. Yeah, he said three words. <laughs> Exactly, but that's not the point. How can we prove we're heroes unless you give us a chance? He's right, Phil. They cleared the limbs. I think they deserve a shot. Hmm, you got a point there, Herc. But still. Of course, we could always cancel the games. Cancel them? What for? Oh, Phil. Old Phil's polyms, polym course was so hard, no one else could finish it. Is that right? Well, if you let us compete, you won't have to cancel the games. How about it, Phil? Hmm. Okay. You got me over a barrel, so fine. Here's how it works, kid. It's Sora, not kid. Sure, sure, kid. Since your team and Hercules are the only contenders... No, they're not. Oh, Cloud! Nice of you to join us! Welcome to the party! The game has a... The games have a new con new challenger. Name's Cloud. The more the merrier! Now the games will really be something to see. I'm looking forward to this. Don't expect me to pull any punches. Hey, as long as you don't expect me to take them. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I'd be flying to a brick wall all the way to the next state. Let's give it our best. Hmm. Okay, let's get the show going. But first, I gotta explain a few rules. Okay. Rule number one. First one through the obstacle course wins. Rule number two. In the event of a tie, a battle will determine the winner. Rule number three. You can interfere with your opponents on the course. And finally, rule number four. All challengers have to give it everything they got. What about rule number five? Don't kill anyone. Alright, enough with the spiel. All your marks get set. Go! And off we go. <laughs> and already we have the key of guidance. This is normally not the case. I usually have to go through a few rooms first before I even get that. But anywho... Uh... Let's see... Since we're kind of low on the map cards... You know what? Never mind. I'll save that for later. I'm gonna go with this. 
and expect me to use this particular card a lot because we're going to get lots of meeting ground cards. <laughs> Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Thank you. Get back here, you. <laughs> we can't start the party without any gas. You know what I mean, folks? <laughs> yeah. And there we go. We got another new map card. Strong Initiative. And I'll explain what that does as we go through this particular fight. What Strong Initiative does is that, uh, Strong... Whenever you, uh, whack an enemy and initiate a first strike against them, you'll not only stun them, but you'll also deal a good chunk of damage, too, so long as you're in the room that the card's effect is in use. Ooh, our first blue card, Calm Bounty. We're definitely going to want to use these cards as often as possible. And the reason I say this is because not only can we find useful treasures, but we can also possibly find new slates, too. Hmm, a level up. There we go now. Come on, Goofy, give me give me a hand, please. Ooh, nice. That's one thing I definitely love about the Goofy Smash. Better use this now. There we go. Donald, can you give me a hand, please? Thanks, buddy. I really needed that, too. Yeah. Another thing, too, when it comes to these freaking monkeys is that they tend to show up in great numbers. So be on guard. Okay, let's race CP now. Also, I think if you increase your max HP when you level up, you automatically get a heal. Like a full heal. Oh, damn it. This isn't good. Now we got Barrel Spiders! <laughs> barrel Spiders work like this. They tend to explode. And do that. And if they do that, well, then you die. <laughs> well, no. What happens is you uh just simply... You just simply take a lot of damage. And unfortunately, since uh, we unfortunately met our end, <laughs> uh, the room pretty much resets. I just wonder, did we lose any cards? Or what? That's something I'm really wondering right now. By the way, if you're going for the achievement undefeated, it's best to play the game in beginner mode, no matter your skill level. That way you don't take as much damage and the enemies are easier to fight in general. Oh, damn it. Well, I think one thing is for sure, if you happen to die in the fight, then uh... Okay, yeah, we lost the level up <laughs> figures. And in order to keep those uh, level ups that we've achieved, we have to leave the room and re-enter. That really, really sucks. Okay, so they don't try to shoot you with uh, pellets, per se. They throw bananas, and if you happen to slip, then you are going to fall and lose some Moogle points. And if you don't recover them fast enough, you lose them. Oh. 
One yeah. other thing worth pointing out too, when executing a slate... When you're executing a slate during a regular fight... Uh... It'll be very, very difficult to break that particular slate, so long as you use high-value cards. If you're using lower ones, like, uh, fours and below, then it'll be pretty easy to break, and that's not something that you want. There you go. And there you go. And we got another card, Lasting Days. And what Lasting Days does is that uh, whenever you initiate a battle and stun the enemy, they'll be stunned for even longer. I think. Either that or... Uh, that or they remain stunned for much... Or they remain stunned no matter how many times you whack them for a set amount of time. Maybe. I think that's how it works. Anyway, let's see what else we can find in this room. By the way, I'm gonna try to fight as many Heartless as I can and fight every single encounter until the end. Whether I win or lose, it honestly does not matter that much, though I prefer to win. Winning would be good. If you don't win, then uh, your efforts will be in vain. One other thing worth pointing out, too, is that after you defeat the enemies, be sure to collect their experience orbs, because they will disappear after a while. If you happen to miss them, then you lose out on experience, and that's not something that you want. However, if the enemy that you defeated is the very last one, then the experience is automatically drawn to Sora. There we are. What do we got? Strong initiative. Cool. Can jump on this? Yeah. Oh, nice! We got the Olympia! The Olympia is a new attack card type and another Keyblade for us to use. The Olympia is a really dang good Keyblade. I just wish I had a higher value card to use it, but of course with uh, better cards come higher prices and higher values. So it'll take more CP to equip, as opposed to the Kingdom Key, which is relatively cheap. Hmm. Oh. I better use this. By the way, I believe these blue monkeys are called Power Wilds. I could be wrong. I th if I'm remembering it, things correctly. Also, really? Eh, I must have had too low of a value. Whatever, we got a new map card type, the Moogle Room. And we get another level up, sweet. Yay. I like level ups. Because it makes me stronger. Stronger, faster, wiser. <laughs> like the Bionic Man. That was easy. Hmm, another roulette room. Cool. The roulette room is an excellent room to use if you're low on map cards and you're trying to gain certain cards and certain types. However, if you're stockpiling cards and you have a ton of them, then <laughs> roulette cards are not going to be the most useful things in the world. I don't want to use Almighty Darkness because of the cards I have in my deck currently. Uh, speaking of which, I really ought to see what I got. I do have a six. So, let's throw this in. 
Here we go. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I can use that, unfortunately. But I can use this fire, I think. Yeah, barely. <laughs> Whenever you acquire a new card, it's wise to look at your deck and see if you can uh, equip that card. Alright, and let's go with Tranquil Darkness. Reason? Well, for one, I like, uh, I like fighting enemies at a good pace. And two, I like the smaller rooms, because I'm able to get through them more quickly. It's more fun too. Also a lot less stressful, lots of things that you have to worry about. <laughs> there we go. Really Donald? I get the fact that you were trying to help me, but I was kinda already at max HP. That's one thing about fire that I really like. It has homing capabilities. Unlike Blizzard, that's... Unlike Blizzard, which fires in a shotgun formation. Also, depending on uh, the number of uh, cards that you use of that particular type, in other words, more Blizzard cards means you can use Blizzara or Blizzaga. Just keep in mind, the first card you use to execute that particular move, you lose it. And be sure to have high value cards too, especially when it comes to boss fights, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. Just like me. Alright, let's try the barrel spider thing again. <laughs> and now we're not learning this little itsy bitsy spider crawl the damn spout again. If we do, we're kind of screwed. And if a barrel spider explodes, you miss out on experience. Which kind of stinks. Oh well. But hey, at least it's another enemy added to our journal entry. And for the sake of this playthrough and the sake of sanity, I'm definitely not going to go for 100% completion because I already did that during my first playthrough. And my first save file actually has a 100% completion stamp. I will uh, show off everything that I need to. That's for sure, including all of the different cards that you can get in the entire game, as well as some other fun stuff. And I'll show those things off when we get to it, eventually. Alright, what do we got? Calm Bounty. Alright, I'm cool with that. I think this room allows me access to the Key of Guidance, or... I require the key of guidance to access. That's my guess. One thing I definitely hate is these freaking spider barrels. They always uh, tend to appear where you don't want them to appear. And they're always so annoying to deal with too. But they do give out a good amount of experience. So. Take it as you will. Okay, what's next? <laughs> what am I to talk about now? In actuality, I have no clue. Oh well. Another Calm Bounty card added to the collection. And it's not THE collection, but it's a collection nonetheless. So, as I've said uh, several times over already, despite this uh, being my least favorite in the series, this game is still fun to play, and I still get some enjoyment out of the game. That's something I really like. And there are some good things in the game that I truly enjoy about the game, too. However, there are some serious flaws. I.e. with the freaking combat system. 
I mean, I'm more of a fan of the traditional Kingdom Hearts combat system, and even the one in Birth by Sleep is better than this one. I know they were trying to do something different, but still, I'm still not a fan. I'm just saying. It's kind of, it kind of reminds me of the car mechanic from Mario Party 9 and 10. You know, it was a interesting idea, but it was just not well executed. Yes. Just like with the card system in this game. <laughs> just saying. I mean, I would rather button mash and button mash my way to victory, but hey, that's just me. However, some people can look at it as a bit of a good thing too because this offers uh, players the ability to use strategy when assembling their decks and choosing which cards to use for which lore and which situation. And also when to use slates and when to not use slates, etc, etc. One other thing worth pointing out, too, is that uh, sometimes using uh, the cure card can often uh, help you, even if it doesn't actually heal you, per se. But as long as you break the enemy card, then you're good to go. Oh, hi there, let's fight you. Reason? Because we need to, for one, to gain more experience. And two, so we can gain some more map cards, because in order to access this next room, we have a new criteria type, and that is a card combination. The card combination works like this. If it's white, you can use any number of cards to uh, work this total down. In this case, we have a total of 15 for the criteria, however... We can't use zero cards to bring the total down instantaneously. It just doesn't work. So we need numbers one through nine in order to uh, bring the total down. Let's see, let's go with you. And with that, we brought the total down to nine. And that's eight. And whenever you come across doors like these, if you have an excessive amount of, uh, say, cards like uh, Meeting Ground or Material Waking, it's best to go through and just clean out what cards you don't need. And uh, I'm going to get rid of this one. And done. Gorsh, that one's nice of them to wait up, wait for us to catch up. <laughs> He's not waiting. Remember rule number three? You can interfere with your opponents on the course. He's looking to narrow the field. You can put that away. I'm not looking for a fight with you, so keep moving. Huh? What do you mean? See? He was waiting for us to catch up. Well, we've caught up. Let's take him up on his offer and keep going. I don't see a downside. Wait. Cloud, where are you going? Listen, are you sure? I'm not here for the cup. Just Hercules. Today, he loses more than the competition. You don't mean... But why? This is business. Stay out of it. Go win your cup. Do you realize what you're doing? Yeah. Rule number three. You can interfere with your opponents, right? You're not the only one who wants to fight Hercules. Big mistake. Oh dear. Well, now we have a mid-boss fight, and this is against Cloud. Cloud works like any other boss who we've encountered at this point, so he can use slates of his own 
or you can uh, or you can use regular cards. And just like uh, any other boss fight, it's good to uh, make sure your reload is set to one. There you go. Courage. Oh, dang it. Dang it, Cloud. Why you gotta be that guy? Uh, at the very least, he didn't block my healing. <laughs> that tends to happen a lot in boss fights. They tend to block your healing capabilities. And if that happens, well, you're gonna be in trouble. Ow! Crap! Okay, good enough. Farewell. Well, that's that stunk. <laughs> uh, he broke my freaking combo. Not something I really wanted to happen. Oh, wow. That was pretty dang close, because Cloud is no no pushover, just like Axel. But even so, <sighs> he did offer some stiff competition, that is for sure. Anywho, we got a new item card, a high potion. Too bad its value is crap, but <laughs> it's still a new card nonetheless. Cloud, where'd you go? He had... He's headed for the finish line. We better go after him. Right. And with that, we got the key to truth. Nice. I'm cool with that. But of course, before we go anywhere, there's still the matter of exploring this unknown room. And within this room... Uh, We'll find more Heartless, of course. And uh, by the way, if you happen to go into this room after using like the Key of Guidance, Key of Beginning, Key of Truth, stuff of that nature, then uh, the room that is assigned is completely random. And literally anything can happen in the room. Or at least its combination can be random. Could use a nice heal right about now. For sh that's for sure. Phew, that was close. Way too close. And with that, we got another roulette room. Awesome. So whenever you're exploring a room, it's wise to try to clear out all the enemies in the room before going around jumping on top of objects and smashing obstacles. Because if you uh, happen to get caught by an enemy while you're trying to grab stuff, well then you're going to have a bad time. And nobody likes a bad time. Trust me. No one really does. Anywho, this is the special room I was talking about earlier back in Traverse Town. This special room needs access to a special key card that is incredibly rare and has a very low drop rate, and that is the key to rewards. And the key to rewards drops randomly in battle, like any other card. And that one does not count towards the 99 card total, because it's a key card, but I think if you have a maximum number of cards, its drop rate drops even lower. 
But I could be completely wrong about that. Donald. Anywho, uh, I haven't really explained how Simba works. Basically, Simba unleashes a mighty roar and it affects all enemies within the vicinity. Whatever enemies are in front of him, that's who uh, Simba damages. However, if he if an enemy is behind Simba, then he doesn't really damage the enemies unless it's within a very, very close proximity. Hmm, moments for prize. Anywho, HP it is. As we're playing through this game, early levels will be achieved very quickly, if that wasn't obvious, but even so. Later levels are going to take a lot more experience in order to achieve. And trust me, you're going to need a lot of experience. And you're going to want to be at a very high level by the end of the game in order to finish everything smoothly. Especially if you're playing on proud mode, in which case you you essentially want to be maxed out as far as levels are concerned. But then again, I may try to fight the final boss at not a max level, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. Oh, nice! We actually got a decent Olympia card. <laughs> it's a five, and I call fives decent, along with sixes and sevens. Or just fives and sixes are considered decent, four and below are crap. Seven and seven, eight, and nine are awesome and are highly valuable. Zero cards, they're good, and they have their uses. Especially in boss fights when you're breaking enemy cards. However, zero cards do have their limitations, meaning that uh, they can easily be broken by multiple enemies and spammed quite a lot. Not exactly something you like to deal with all the time. You know what I mean, folks? Hmm. Okay, Goofy. See what you can do. Hmm. Nice one. Ooh, magic level three. Let's go for it. Bring on the thunder, bring on the pain. And the calm bounty. Alrighty. I'm cool with that. I like a calm bounty every once in a while. It's nice, calm, relaxing, you know? It's just, it's just a good thing. Good thing to have, that's for sure. I think what I'm gonna do is turn this into a save room. Um, yeah, let's go with that. that. The reason? This will make things so much easier in the long run. And it's a good idea to save progress as often as you can anyway. Another kingdom key. Well, that's kind of lame. But oh well. That's the luck of the draw sometimes. <laughs> uh, I hate using that term, but it's so true in this game. Luck plays a pretty major factor. Okay, let's see if I can uh, use anything here. Hmm, 19, not bad. Oh wow, I can actually, uh, <laughs> that was awesome. I can actually use it. Anywho, when it comes to high potions, how these work is that this reloads all attack cards very quickly. And this includes cards uh, that were used in slates. So, definitely better than the regular potion, but they cost a lot of CP in order to equip. Even for lower value cards like 3. Holy crap, 48 freaking CP just for a freaking high potion. And at this point in the game, you're better off just sticking with regular potions if you possibly can. 
Even so, it's still annoying that that's even a thing. I seriously hate the, the card system so much. I mean, sure, it offers its own fair share of strategies and stuff of that nature. But it still annoys me to death that I can't really unleash the game's true potential. Unless I have infinite CP. <laughs> And I can work on it forever and ever. Like, make the ultimate deck. You know what I mean? You lost! Give it up, Cloud! We're not done yet. I can't guarantee your safety if, you, if we keep going like this. Better worry about yourself. Looks to me that you're slowing down a bit. Ugh. Don't worry, I'll back you up. Sora? Get all the backup you want. I'm going to finish you and get my back my memories. <gasps> Your memories? Now, now, Cloud, we don't want to spill the beans. Hades, you? Looks like you oversold yourself. All you did was wear him down. This doesn't look good for your performance rating. Let me put it this way. You, my spiky hair friend, are fired! But my memories, we had a deal! Did you really think you could get back your lost memories just like that? Get a grip. Why, you? Out of the way. I'll take care of the Hercules myself. Why doesn't he just fight us then? You know, fight the Hades with us then. Hey! Rule number five, it's never too late to enter the games. Hades, you were behind this from the start. Cloud may have failed to take you out, but he did break you down. Time for plan B. Pack your pita, Herc, cause you just want a free trip to the underworld, paid by me. Hold it! Sora, no! Come on, Herc. How can we ha go one-on-one -on -one if you're in the underworld? Good point, kid. I guess you'll just have to go with him. Rule number six. There are no rules. Ha <laughs> ha! Let's go, then. Now, Hades is a very, very tough enemy to take down. That is for sure. His attacks are deadly and they hit like a freaking truck. So it's a pretty good idea to, pre to be at a high level at this point. And executing your dodge roll like a freaking madman is a good idea here too. Also, do not use your fire card on Hades whatsoever because Doing so will heal him. Also, card breaks are your friend in the entire freaking fight. That's it. Oh dear. That's it. Fire! Well, that was stupid. <laughs> oh well. It's fine. Take that! Take that! I really am not a fan of uh, Hades' extreme That's movement. It. Also, you, Hades' uh, Viraga balls are very, very dangerous. Donald, what the hell is wrong with you? Ugh, damn it, Donald. I better reload now. Goofy smash! Damn it! Well, that was lame. Take that. Take that. 
As I said, Hades is very, very difficult to fight, for sure. However, if you pay attention to his slate combination, then you can uh, easily break his slate if you happen to use the right card combination. And using a zero card at just the right moment. Damn it, Donald! Whenever Hades uses his dark, his, uh, Fire Raga Ball slate, uh, he launches two of them. Thanks, Hades. Thanks for breaking up Donald's stupidity. I mean, holy crap on the frickin' stick. Damn it! I'm gonna die. I am going to freaking die. Ah! Bloody hell. I was afraid that was gonna happen too. It usually does. <laughs> I may go one more time just to see if I can do anything else against him. And if uh, I can't, then I may just uh, consider level grinding for a bit. And since this is a live stream, level grinding is gonna be a thing. <laughs> right, I'm gonna wait for him to use this slate. How do I still get caught, even though that barely hit me? Heck, I don't think it even did. Ah, screw you, Hades. Feel the heat. That's it. That's it. Damn it. That's it. Damn it. Still freaking failed. Take that. Take that. Take that. Take that. By the way, whenever you're executing a slate, you do you do not want to use a zero card as your first card for executing slates. Trust me, you do not want to do that. God damn it, still wasting the stun impact. Take that! Take that! That's it! I probably That's should have it. saved that zero card now that I think about it. <laughs> Take that! Fire. Take that! I'm screwed. Take that! I am so screwed. Take that! That's it! Damn it! Damn, he still kicked my freaking ass. Honestly, I think it's just bad luck. That was just bad luck there. I swear. No, skip the event. I'm gonna go one more freaking time. Let's go again. Feel the heat. Oh, that's not right. That'll work. Take that. Feel the heat. Thanks, Donald, for actually... Never mind. Screw you! <laughs> Damn it, Donald. Why do you have to use fire on a fire enemy? Take 
Take that! Take power! Take that! Damn it! Okay, I need to look at my levels and see where I'm at. It's time to execute a grinding montage, people. <laughs> okay, level 11. I think at this point I want to be at least level 15. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to get myself up to level 15 and I'm, then I'll try to fight him again. Let's see, what should I use? I think I'm going to use one of these, or not. You know what, let's use a calm bounty and see... Never mind, can't use that either. <laughs> dang it. Why does the value have to be so dang high? Seven. It's always a seven. Dang it! Wow, this really limits my options. Alright. Well, since I can only use seven or higher, or zero, let's go with the roulette room. Because this way, <laughs> I can at least get some enemies to show up here. Okay, here we go. And with that, we got an, a little roulette card. That means that the roulette wheel can now initiate. And it'll initiate at the end of battle. Courage. Well, it's, uh, at least this way I can uh, show off some uh, new map cards, maybe. Depends on how kind the game is to me. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna go for the six. There we go. There we go. Alright, what's next? Hmm, I think I need 25 more experience points in order to level up. Is that right? No. Still need another 350. <laughs> what am I thinking? There we go. Hm. Well, no roulette wheel this time. Usually the roulette wheel appears about 90% of the time whenever you're using the roulette card combination. Also, we have a new kind of obstacle. And those uh, obstacles tend yeah. to uh, fire a projectile of some kind. And when it does, and it hits you, then you're going to not only take damage, but you'll be confused too. However, I don't think uh, overworld obstacles can kill you, but can knock you down as low as 1 HP. Okay. Wrong combination. It goes... Goofy Donald and then me. Also, how did that miss? Man, I hate these low value cards. They can burn the freaking fire for all I care. But unfortunately, we have to deal with them. Unfortunately, grinding sessions, uh, <laughs> sometimes they just have to happen out of freaking nowhere, especially when it comes to RPGs. It sucks that it's even a thing, especially when a banana is thrown at you with point-blank range. But, oh well. Nice whack. Take that. Huh, that's weird. Why am I not getting the roulette card thing? Usually that happens like all the time after every battle. Uh, 
perhaps I'm just not lucky. Oh well. Oh, there we go. There's a roulette thing. Finally, one appeared. Okay, we need a red card here. Let's go with you. No, there's zero, but oh well. Zeros are still good cards anyway. There we are. What's next? Wow, what a low combo. Also, why didn't that initiate? Usually that does. Oh well. As far as uh, uploading this to YouTube is concerned, this will work the same as before with uh, Sonic and the Black Knight. This uh, live stream will be uploaded on. These live streams will be uploaded on Tuesdays and Thursdays to YouTube, and I will stream this game on Saturdays and Sundays until the game is complete. We need a uh, one, five, seven, and eight. So let's just go with there. Perfect. That's what I want. Maybe another six, but it's better than nothing. Another thing that sucks about running around in the field is that the... It's just dealing with enemies that are floating in the air. Usually enemies that float in the air are very evasive. Oh, I'm surprised I even got away with that. <laughs> Usually enemies just break the card. Break the combination like it's freaking the... Uh, uh, rice paper. Usually. But I guess not all the time. Bosses tend to do that, though. That's for sure. Hmm, alright. Another level up. Just what I needed. And... Let's learn a new slate. Strike Raid. Man, I love Strike Raid. Hurl the Keyblade forward, stunning enemies and dealing damage to the enemy in its path. You need three attack cards with a total value of 24 to 26. And it could be any three attack cards, I think. Or it has to be the same type. Either way, it has to be a value of either 24, 25, or 26 for the slate total in order to execute that ability. This training session may unfortunately be taking a while if we're trying to get up to at least level 15. Which I think that may be a good point to... A good point to be at at this point in the game. But that's just me. There we go. There we go. Perfect. I needed a zero blue card. There is one other strategy you could possibly use in boss fights too, and that is to use an item card in your slate combination. Because using it as your first card, it can uh, help you greatly. It really can. I mean, you're going to lose the card after you use it anyway, so 
why not? <laughs> why not use it for like an emergency combination attack? If you really need it. This is why I hate using the zero card outside of boss fights. The enemies just break it so easily as they spam their own attack cards repeatedly over and over again. There we are. Well, what should we go for this time? I'm thinking, uh... Dang it! I wanted the 9, not the 2. Oh well. I needed the 2 anyway. Even so. We'll see, how many map cards do I even have? 37. Eh... Uh, I can still get plenty more, so that's good. Alright, what to do now? We still need three more level ups before we even try to face Hades again, <laughs> in all honesty. Well, I do need another room to continue level grinding in. Or maybe I should uh, show off this. I can't. Dang it. Because of the freaking high combo. You know, the high criteria. You know what? Uh, I'm going to go with this. Stagnant space. What this card does is that Heartless move at half of their speed. So they're easier to dodge on the field. So they don't move as quickly. But other than that, it's uh, not that useful of a card. I mean, if you're trying to avoid enemies like the plague, then that's another thing altogether. Damn, that sucks. But hey, at least it worked. It typically doesn't. Hmm, how do you access shortcuts again? Fire. Freeze. Dang it. I I've already forgotten. That's not good. Oh man, another barrel spider? Really game? Well, if you're going for 100% completion, there is one thing you should definitely know about. And that is, bosses aren't the only ones who can drop enemy cards. Almost every single Heartless who you fight in the entire game can have, they have an enemy card of their own. And if you happen to defeat them, you have a chance of getting that particular enemy card and you can use that within your deck. And each enemy card has their own share of effects, as well as strengths and weaknesses. Like certain attacks can, uh, like, for example, certain cards can boost your uh, lizard attacks and uh, can boost your fire attacks and other things. There are many different kinds of combinations that you should try out. When it comes to me and my playstyle, I tend to not use enemy cards very much, if any at all. Hey, we got a new map card type, the White Room. That is where the special situation uh, deck comes into play that usually I like to create. The special situations are made for the White Fungi Room. The White Fungi Room works like this. You have to use, uh, you have to play a game of charades with them. And depending on uh, what motions they use for their sign language, you have to use that corresponding spell. Use it three times and you can get some serious, uh, you can get some serious prizes. What kind of prizes exactly? Um, 
I'm not too sure, but I do know one of them is an enemy card, and pleasing them a lot can uh, increase your odds of getting it. I think. Who's next? Fire. Freeze. Heal. That'll work. By the way, there is a way to extend your maximum three hit combo, but you need an enemy card in order to even do so. So most of the game, you're just going to be stuck with using uh, a three-hit combo the entire frickin' time. That's lame, but that's the way the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. Damn it. That's another thing I really don't like either, is that the targeting system can sometimes be a bit janky, especially when you're surrounded by multiple objects. It's like you're trying to attack a Heartless, but the game targets something else, like a door that you can't really whack. And you're trying to attack the enemy, which you can't do because of the targeting acquisition. <sighs> Unfortunately, it's just the way it is. There we go, what do we got? Material Waking. Alright. Strangely enough, we haven't gotten a single regular enemy card yet. You can actually carry up to more than one enemy card of each type. You can carry up to a lot of them, actually. Trust me. You're gonna want to collect as many as you can. And I believe you can hold up to 99 of any given card. Ever. go. We're still at level 12, which is unfortunate. Hmm, maybe... Maybe my goal of a uh, level 15 is a bit of a stretch at this point. Huh. What am I to do? Since I need a, a 7 card no matter what, and I need to keep this as my save point... You know what, let's just uh, keep working on this, I suppose. I got six of those in combination. Let's use a zero. <sighs> Man. Don't you just love it when you have those uh, kinds of rooms with high combinations? Or high criteria. I don't. In fact, I despise them. Sometimes, like I said, it's all luck of the draw. Donald, what's wrong with you? Okay, what do we got? Strong initiative. Okay. At this point, we have nearly every type of map card there is, I think. I could be wrong on that. I know we have a lot of them, that's for sure. There we go, Donald. Way to think on your feet, which is rare. Not want to target you. <laughs> Tom Black. This is why I hate using low value cards like ones, twos, threes, and even fours. Because they're next to useless, especially when it comes to World 2. Oh, hello! We have our first regular enemy card the Blue Rap City. And Blue Rhapsody, what that does whenever you use the card, your blizzard attacks are boosted. And it's at 
it's like this for a certain number of reloads. So if you have a large number of cards within a single deck, then that particular combination can truly be of a, a great benefit. Well, that was a bad use of that. <laughs> oh well. CP. Back to the CP we go. <laughs> okay, just two more levels in this grind session, folks. Then we'll try to fight Hades again. And if we are still getting our asses royally handed to us, then <laughs> I'll definitely, uh... I'll definitely level grind some more, but then again, I may go off screen and do that. <laughs> because it is starting to get late, and we're almost at the three-hour mark. Honestly, I wasn't thinking that we would, uh, reach this particular milestone so soon. Oh well. Time flies when you're having fun and when you're, ex you know, explaining a lot of things. And basically explaining how the entire game works. In that sense, this game is, uh, not so easy to pick up and play, and it's also incredibly difficult to master. Not exactly a good combination for good game design, <laughs> in my honest opinion. <laughs> but hey, that's just me. Got a good number of Moogle points already, but trust me when I say this, you're going to want to hold on to your Moogle points as long as possible and try to work with the cards that you have. And besides, even if I wanted to use a Moogle Room, I can't. Not until I can uh, get a high enough value card of 7 or higher. Then I could possibly use it. Oh, and uh, another thing too, you may have noticed these uh, random question mark barrels. Well, if you happen to pick them up and throw them in the vicinity of an enemy, you'll confuse them. So, they'll uh, not really know what the heck it is that they're doing. And you can also... Uh, you can also wail on them uh, very, very easily and with little to no issue. Surprised that he even hit him. Anywho, we got a new map card, Sorcerer's Waking. Much like Material Waking, what that does is increases the value of your magic cards and summoning cards too. So if, uh, let's say you use fire and it has a combination of, it has a card value of five, well that value jumps up in the value to like seven or six. And higher value cards also increase in value too, up to a maximum of nine. What do we have? Calm bounty. Okay. Is there anything else in this room? I don't think so. Okay then. <sighs> oh my back. Alright, let's see what we have. What we have next. <laughs> According to our in-game time, we're only 2 hours and 54 minutes into this playthrough, but we're well over the 3 hour mark in this play session. <laughs> okay, yeah. Blue Rhapsody increases the uh, strength of ice-based attacks. I wonder if I can add anything else here. I think I'm going to go ahead and add the guard armor. There we go. Just barely was able to add him in the first place. <laughs> nice. Very, very nice. One other thing we're pointing out, too. It's sometimes a good idea to try to rework uh, your deck at least a little bit to include uh, better keyblades within your deck if you happen to have any. Even if they're the same numeric value, 
Typically, the newer Keyblades are better, but, however, bleh. But they also have their own fair shares of strengths and weaknesses. Like some can offer you the ability to attack faster, or they may uh, may have a better recovery than others. It really depends on the card and which the Keyblade is. Okay, uh, what should we use? I think I'm going to use a strong initiative card. That'll work. Like I said, we're at level 13, so we still got a ways to go. As far as level ups are concerned. Another thing worth pointing out too, depending on what Keyblade card you use for your attacks, it can also deal higher amount of damage. Keep this in mind as you're assembling your deck once again. And execute. Let's go! Wow, that was not a good wild crush. <laughs> Well, I did manage to kill someone, at least. Still, the Wild Crush is pretty difficult to control. But, it can be very, very deadly when taking out a large group of enemies. Hi there. Die. <laughs> oh! Nice! That was unexpected. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be that easy. But that's what Strong Initiative does. Stuns the enemy and deals a tremendous amount of damage. Well, at least for the first wave. For future enemies that join in the fight, they'll be full they'll be at full health. Kinda lame I know, but oh well. What you gotta do? What you gonna do? Break my arms. Power. I know you shouldn't really give me any ideas, or I shouldn't give you any ideas. Fire. Freeze. Oh, what do we have? Another premium room, huh? Oh, give me. All right, another Olympia. Too bad it's only a three, which sucks. <laughs> But, it's better than nothing. In fact, why don't we just go ahead and put this in our deck? Boom. And boom. Actually, I really ought to reorganize. Oops. There we go. That's what I kind of meant to do, but... There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Sometimes the user interface is not really that friendly. Not very user-friendly. Especially when it comes to deck building, but you get used to it over time. Uh, let's see. Controller Type B, what's the shortcut? Release stocked cards. Shoot, I still don't remember what combination it is I use to access shortcuts. Oh well. Yeah. It. <sighs> Funny enough, explosive barrels don't hurt you, they only hurt the enemies. So don't worry about the throwing it against the wall and end up hurting yourself. <laughs> That's just not gonna happen. Give me that. Wow, not very much damage, huh? 
kind of sucks. Okay. Nice. Nice card. Oh, really? Another goddamn barrel spider. I hate these damn things. They're freaking pests, I swear. Well, that sucked. <laughs> Especially considering the fact that I lost some serious health. And I lost on some potential experience, too. Which sucks even more. Screw you all. Way too close. Way too close for comfort, that's for sure. I don't know why my mustache is just itching. Okay, what do we got up here? Pretty much the same dang thing all the time. <laughs> oh well, what can you do? Just gotta deal whatever cards are dealt to you. No one to play them and no one to fold them. <laughs> Too bad that's not a thing in this game, which is unfortunate. Actually, that may actually not be a good thing, now that I think about it. Mm. No one to play, no one to fold. And when you fold, you will die. Another thing, too, that's very annoying when trying to initiate battle on the field is that if you uh, happen to get sandwiched between an enemy and a wall, you're going to hit the wall a lot. Another thing worth pointing out too, whenever you're using a summoning card, you're gonna be stuck in place so long as uh, that summoning card so long as that summoning card is in use. You won't be able to move around very much, if at all. It depends on the kind of summoning card that you use and when you use it. Work. Not exactly my ideal way of fighting, but oh well, I kind of had to get out of that situation somehow. Also, give me that. Damn it. Ran out of time. All because I got sandwiched between the power of wild and a freaking wall. <laughs> there we go. What do we have? Material walking again. Or waking. Whatever. Screw you. Alright, folks. One more level to go. Then we'll try to fight Hades again. And uh, after we defeat him, I'm going to call this a session. Or if we beat him. Well, either way. <laughs> uh, we still got a little ways to go. And we still have to get... Uh, 804 experience points which can take a little bit of time but thankfully since this is still early game it won't take us a freaking eternity just to gain another level wait what am I doing okay what should we use this time hmm sleep sleeping darkness I guess I'll show off this room. Alright, here's how Sleeping Darkness works. When you're, uh... 
Hmm. Apparently I lost some frames somewhere. Oh well. Anyway, sleeping darkness works. The room is incredibly small and each and every enemy on the field will be asleep. So it's easy pickings and open seats until you initiate the battle. Also, because of the small room size, there's not really much you can do within the room itself as far as taking out obstacles to gain additional HP orbs or movement point orbs and even uh, potentially new cards. Hmm, Sorcerer's Waking. Cute. Come on, target the enemy and not the door. Thank you. Here's a little fun fact for you. In the original Chain of Memories, in order to create new rooms, you have to whack the doors. Why? Why was that a thing? No clue. Do not ask questions. Do not ask why. Just do it. Just do as you're told. And be a good boy and do it. Go. What we got? Another Sleeping Darkness card. I'm alright with that. I better take you out first. Goofy, Goofy smash, please. Thanks, bud. Seriously, Goofy is truly the MVP. <laughs> I am one of the best friends you can ever have in this entire game. Because at least he attacks physically and can deal damage to most enemies without much of an issue. Donald, on the other hand, I mean, sure, he does have his, his uses and he can heal you in a pinch. But the thing is, he can also heal enemies too by accident, by using their favorable elemental... Uh, Abilities such as thunder and fire. Not exactly something you like to use on those kinds of enemies, that's for sure. Not too much longer. There we go! Well, we're not done yet. Not even close. Not yet. Well, that was kind of a bust. <laughs> oh well. Let's set up another combo. And we'll go again. Uh, what should I use? You know what, I think I'm just going to use another roulette room, because, well, I kind of need high value cards right now, like between 7, 8, and 9. Really, game? God, I hate these freaking power wilds, and I think the yellow monkeys are called bouncy wilds. Although I could be completely wrong on that. I mean, what makes them so bouncy? There we are. What's next? Funny enough, whenever you encounter a big body on the field, you can whack them anywhere and still get an initiative. Like, uh... You can still stun him, no matter where you hit him. So long as you hit him in general, then you're good. Alright, what do we have? Ooh. 
got it. Just what I needed and just what I wanted. A nice Moogle room. A Moogle room and a high value one at that. God damn it. By the way, whenever you are hit and you are confused, your controls become reversed. So forward is backwards, left is right, etc, etc. And it usually lasts like that for several seconds. So if you happen to get confused, remember it's opposite day whenever you're confused. Another roulette. Perfect. Just what I wanted. Sorcerer's Waking, card number nine. Ooh. Give me good. Okay. <sighs> Not a value I wanted, but it's still good enough. It's a five at least, and that's what matters. So long as it's five or above, then it's decent. A five or six, it's decent. Seven, eight, or nine, it's awesome. That's my rule of thumb. Don't you just hate it whenever you're executing a slate or something, you try to execute it and then you get hit on like a uh, one frame and then uh, execute the slate anyway? <laughs> I mean sure it prevents you from being stunned, but at the same time it's still annoying to deal with. Another material waking. Another strategy you could probably use to your benefit is to concentrate on one category of uh, level ups. So instead of going for balance, you can just spam uh, HP upgrades until eventually you max out on that. Or you can go for CP and max out on that instead. It depends on uh, your cup of tea and how much uh, you want to challenge yourself. In my opinion, balance is the way to go. But if you really, really want to focus on just one type of level up, I highly recommend going for CP first. Because that's like, uh, that means you have more attack, more chances to attack before reloading. And you, uh, can use more cards too. And use them way more often. I believe the maximum amount of CP you can uh, have in this game is, um, I think it's um, about 5,000 or something? That or it's 9,000. I don't remember for sure. But either way, it's a very, very high number. Okay, let's go for something good. Perfect. Just what I wanted. Another nine for a material waking. Freaking sweet. Alright, who's next for the slaughterhouse? Well, okay, we're not really slaughtering anyone. <laughs> not yet, at least. Not until we are of a much higher level, for sure. And we have better cards to work with, too. Thanks for the double heal. Not that I really needed it. Only healing I kind of needed was just a level one. That was it. Or just one heal would 
will suffice, but no. No. No, that's not at all how it works. Okay, what we got? What do we got this time? Here's a new card we haven't seen yet. Teeming Darkness. Teeming Darkness works like this. There's a ton of Heartless in a very large room. It's one of the largest rooms that you can ever put yourself into in the entire game. But there will be lots of Heartless to fight, and it's also a really good card to use for level grinding, and it can also increase your chances of obtaining an enemy card from a particular enemy you're trying to hunt down. So that is awesome. Oh, really, game? Oh, no, you don't. You saw a bitch. <laughs> God, I hate these freaking enemies. And what's worse is that they can theoretically put you into a stun lock. And that's not something that you want to be in. That's for sure. Hey, how we finally achieved level 15. Finally. God damn. But before we face Hades again, it's a good idea to just go around and finish cleaning up this room. Because there's still a, a possibility of obtaining new cards, and maybe even a chance of getting another level up. Sometimes being over leveled is a good idea when facing a boss. <laughs> that way you don't have to deal with him or her or it at all that much. Also, ow. Lame. <laughs> Apparently whacking the fiery uh, object twice reignites the fire after putting it out. <laughs> uh, weird video game logic. Yeah, bite me. No. <laughs> Another blue rhapsody. <laughs> I would have preferred a more like a another enemy card altogether, like a bouncy wild, but oh well. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Anyone else in this room? No? Okay. Okay, now that we finally achieved level 15, I'm gonna see if I can uh, maybe add another card into the mix. Hmm. Kinda iffy. Yeah, that's it. Oh well. Could always throw in a couple of threes, but uh, I don't think that's such a good idea. Maybe I'll throw in a high potion. Let's see, that's 42. Five. Alright, cool. At the very least, uh, it's the same value as our uh, old potion was. So that's awesome. That's awesome to see. Now we have an upgraded item and we can use it at any time. And almost as many times as we want. Granted, we can only use it once for battle, but still. You get the point, right? Okay, now that we're at level 15, I think now's a good time to try to fight Hades again. <laughs> and I pray this time we'll be able to do something against him. If not, I'm gonna be freaking pissed. Strange. Twitch is saying that I'm not online, even though I clearly am. <laughs> uh, oh well. Uh, at the very least, I do have the recorded version of uh, this stream to fall back on if I absolutely need to. Ooh, nice. Executed one of my new slates. That's it. Okay, that's not a good combination. Take that. Yeah. That's it. 
God damn it! I did not mean to use the freaking potion! That's it. That's it. Take that! Power! Take that! Take I'm screwed. I am so freaking screwed. Where are friend cards when you That's need it. them? Damn it! Too late. Game over. <laughs> I really wish I could just retry the fight right then and there, no question, but no. That was not integrated until Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. And that makes me sad. Maybe at this point you want to be level 20? Again, that's just purely a guess at this point. Take that. Come on, cancel the card out, please. Seriously, I hate these freaking low-level cards. Those low-value cards, I mean. The only low-value card I like is a zero. Oh, shoot. Why'd I do that? Take that. Heal. Take that. Take that. Take that. Take that. Hey, Goofy. That's it. Nah, damn it. That didn't work. All because the combination I used was so damn low. Take that. Freeze. Heal. That's it. That's it. Take that. Take that. Didn't have a choice. I had to take the hit. Damn it, man. <sighs> Damn, Hades. You really are a really tough son of a bitch. Especially at this point in the game. I mean, holy crap. Oh, Jesus, flip. I got the That's item it. card to go off. Up for your mistake. Take that. That's it. That's it. That didn't work. Yeah. Take that. Take that. Stand by. There we go! Finally! Jesus! <laughs> Whew, that was way too close. Way, way too close.
And with that, we got ourselves a new card. Hades. What does he do? Find out next time on the next exciting episode of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Just kidding. What? The games are canceled? How come? Two words. Everyone is pooped. Are you sure they're not lemons? Wait, that was more than two. You got me kidding! What about my match with Hercules? I'm sorry, Sora, but you wouldn't want me to compete in this count in this condition. Let's have a match when I've rested up a bit. Can you wait? Okay, I'll hold you to that. Then it's settled. Sora, over here! He's coming around! You okay, Cloud? Yeah. Sorry I messed up your games. Hey, hope you get b your memories back. Forget about what Hades said. Sometimes the th thinnest thing can make you remember stuff you forgot years ago. Or the tiniest thing. If it's an important memory, there's no way it could ever be gone forever. That's what I think anyway. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Ooh, what's this? That's for you. For helping me out. Sure. I mean, sure you don't want to just come with us instead? <laughs> I don't think he can come with us anyway. Not interested. Because world order. Protecting the world order, I mean. But anywho, we got a new summoning card. It's Cloud. <laughs> it's a cloud. And it wants to eat your face. Because it's delicious. And another crappy Kingdom Key card. <laughs> Dang it. Well, whatever. At the very least, <laughs> uh, at the very least, we finally finished this goddamn world. <laughs> All right, and before we wrap things up here and begin the next floor, I'm going to see what's behind this door and see where it takes me next. It's that creepy castle that I was talking about earlier. I know I didn't imagine it. Cause that was the castle where Sora had to use the Keyblade to free Kyrie's heart. Then he just disappeared. And I was so worried. How could I ever forget that? Oh. It was when I turned into a Heartless. Wait, that happened... in a castle? Ah, uh, you forgot that? Because I remember both of you. Then really? That's easy, Atlas. <laughs> Somebody help me. I forget your trouble. Every word. I finished the first volume right before we got to this castle. Now then, if I can just find it... Oh, <laughs> here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, how could it be? What's the matter? Oh, my entries, they're gone. Every page is blank. What do we do? My God, what madness How is this? How could this have happened? I'm so careful with the journals. <laughs> All that hard work is gone. The journal's blank. What's going on? 
That's what I'd like to know myself. Jiminy is not that reckless when it comes to his journals and journal entries. How could they have all just suddenly disappeared? Once we get out of the castle, let's help Jiminy rewrite the journal. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I don't think Jiminy would erase his own journal. No, really? What'd you think he would do? <laughs> Spill some coffee on it? Ooh, who's this chick? Hmm, someone mysterious who likes to draw. I wonder if that's an important key factor in this story. Something's screwy. Could a princess go trust on us? What if it's more things? Huh? Goofy was telling us about another castle we've been to. But none of us really remembers it. Do you think? Could it be that we don't remember because we're losing our memories? Losing our memories? Hold on. Remember what that mystery fellow said? In this place, to find is to lose. And to lose is to find. It must have been our memories he was talking about losing. So if we keep going, we'll lose more. Guess it really is Castle Oblivion. So the higher we go, the more we'll forget. <laughs> Just like me, hey, hey, Rolf Hawk, welcome to the stream. Riku and Kairi too. We're just about to wrap things up here for today. Don't worry, fellers. We might forget about where we've been or what things we've seen, but we won't forget who our friends are. I don't know. Come Funny on, enough, Sora. he's right. When you turned into a heartless, did you forget about me and Donald? Of course I didn't. There you go. No matter what happens, you won't forget your friends. And Goofy's the smart one in the Kingdom Hearts universe. We're all going to die. <laughs> uh. You're right. Thank you, Goofy. So, if there's nothing here that can make you forget about your friends, then we have nothing to be scared of. Let's go! But when I turned into a Heartless, who was the one who took forever to notice and kept clobbering me? <laughs> How come you couldn't forget about that? <laughs> oh, Donald. Always love wanting to make light on the situation. There's no way we can ever forget our friends. <laughs> You'd be surprised. If you're still remembering the silly stuff, we'll be okay. Thanks, buddy. But, at this point now, it's starting to get late. And we are three hours and 40 minutes into this live stream session. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Grade A troll, indeed. <laughs> but, as I said earlier, since uh, we've completed the first two worlds in the game, I'm going to save more of the... Uh, we're going to save the additional worlds for tomorrow, tomorrow's play session. At least that's the plan for the next play session. Because it's getting late, I need to eat dinner, and... Yeah. I'm just tired, okay, folks? And I'm hungry, too. Doesn't really help things very much. Anyway... This is General Snivy with the uh, Let's Play Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this live stream and you were able to attend live, thank you for attending. And if you enjoyed this video on YouTube later down the line, great! Be sure to leave a like. Next time in the next play session, we're going to be exploring more of Sora's memories and heading yeah, and then we'll head into another world that we've explored many times before, and we'll be exploring once again. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and you should too. So, once again, thank you all so much for watching. 
I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Okay, that didn't work.